Andrew, marketing manager for Walters Gardens here again today. Uh, purpose of this video, we're going to look at some of the newer plants that we're bringing to the market. So everything in this bed around me will be in our 22-23 catalog marked as new. That means that in 2023, it will be considered widely available, uh, findable in your local garden center. Uh, due to the nature of production, you may be able to find some of these things already on the market in 2022, depending on the input the grower has chosen and how it makes its way to market. But for the most part, you'll be able to find these things much more commonly and widely available in 2023, so next year. Right now, uh, it's about early July 2022. Just gonna do a couple of the quick highlights because there's quite a few plants in this bed and quite a few that couldn't quite make the bed because we are right now in full sun. However, we're gonna start with a plant that does go full sun to full shade. So this is a Stilby Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, obviously, it's got that beautiful dark foliage, near black, just about as close to black as we've ever seen on an Astilbe. New foliage emerges glossy before it becomes a bit more of a matte black. That's foliage color that you'll have all year long. But then the unique thing is we believe this to be the only Astilbe that is on the market, certainly the only one that will be widely available that has dark foliage and has a purple flower. So the skates, as you can see, they're starting to rise up. It is a little bit taller. The buds, they're a bit more of that rosy purple, rosy pink color. I did say this will go full sun to full shade. It will need a good amount of moisture in both locations, not different from any other Astilbe. However, the nice thing about this compared to a lot of the other dark leaf perennials is it is not UV sensitive. So you will get this dark color regardless of the environment that you're growing it in. This plant was selected as much for the foliage as for the flowers, so it will not be as impressive of a floral display as you might get from some other astilbe on the market that were selected primarily for their flowers or for the density of their flower stems. However, the complements of flowers and foliage together, definitely one that make it worthy of any landscape. This is Veronica Ever After. It is in the Magic Show collection from Proven Winners. It has a nice rounded ball-shaped habit, lavender blue flower, new color addition to the series, much lighter uh, in blue color than what Wizard of Oz is, and much more blue than the true purple that Purple Illusion has. So this plant actually behaves though, even though it is closest in color to those, it behaves most like white wands. So it has a nice self-cleaning stem, so the old flowers fall to the ground, keeping the stems nice, green, and clean. And then it also will continue to flower. These spikes get incredibly long, 16, 20 inches long, somewhere in that range every year. So you'll still have color on this plant without having to cut it back going on for several months. This is also a great plant for pollinators. I've got several bumblebees buzzing around me right now. Not, in my, not minding me, they're much too distracted with the plant. But you can expect them, you can expect butterflies to be visiting this plant when it's in peak in that late June into July period of time. June is pollinator month and it would be hard to get through this video without talking about one of the absolute kings of June, Monarda. So this is a new variety that we have coming to the market in 2023. This is Monarda Upscale Red Velvet. It joins the Proven Winners collection with two other upscale varieties, Pink Chenille and Lavender Taffeta. All of these varieties are going to be on the taller end of what we've introduced in the past. So compared with the leading ladies, which are a bit more of a ground hugger, to uh, pardon mys, which are a little bit closer to knee high, red velvet and the rest of the upscale series, these ones will be over two and a half, three feet. So red velvet will have some of the reddest flowers of any of the Minarda in our catalog. We do consider this to be a pretty true red, not a pink imitating a red. Compared with Pardon My Cerise, it will be even more red than that in the garden. This is a North American native perennial. Bee balm, of course, as you would imagine, an absolute favorite of pollinators. If you're looking for a plant that is going to be of immediate benefit to the bee populations in your area, this is one that you want to consider. Bee balm will go um, full sun to part shade. Definitely going to get more flowers, a little bit better performance in full sun will require a little bit more moisture. Keeping these ones uh, a little bit wet will definitely help to improve them. Too wet and you'll see them get long and stretched out. 
Same thing if you put them in too much shade. You'll see a diminished flowering performance there as well. On my right here is Alstroemeria golden tiara. So this one is just starting to get going for the year. It's a Peruvian lily, a sport out of Inca ice, which has a cream flower. This one though has more of a golden yellow and a salmon back, two pastel colors that play off each other quite nicely. It's just starting to get going now, but we expect to see blooms on this plant all the way until frost when that hits us sometime in September or October. It does require a little bit more moisture than your other garden perennials, so be prepared to water it in order to get that continuous bloom. Uh, it is also quite a bit bushier and a little bit taller than some of the other Alstroemerias you might find on the market, but that also plays to it its advantage because that extra vigor also tends to make it a little bit more hardy. Uh, we believe it to be reliably hardy in zone five. Most Alstroemeria is a bit more of a zone six if you're lucky. And if you're a cut flower grower, this is one that I would definitely recommend. Those long stems, and with the length of time that it is in bloom, the extra vigor, this is a plant that you will be able to get a lot of cuts off of. On my other side, we have Leucanthemum 7th Heaven. So this is one of our new Shasta daisies that we're bringing to the market. It's got a really nice size, well-rounded habit, petals, uh, overlapping, multiple layers, great vigor, blooms without vernalization, but vernalization is beneficial. We would recommend still giving it some vernalization. Buds come up cream, uh, creamy yellow, nice color before getting to that size. You can see the size of the flowers. Deadheading will prolong bloom. Definitely one to look at if you're interested in Shasta daisies. And last, we have Allium bubble bath. This is an ornamental onion. I'm probably a little bit early uh, to talk about this plant. As you can see, it isn't quite in bloom yet. Still a lot of nice things to like about this plant. We'll have to do a follow-up video where we look at some of the later season perennials when they come on. But even before this plant gets into bloom, a lot of pretty cool things going on with this plant. It's got this nice glaucous blue mound of foliage, twisted stems, and then even as the blooms come up before they start to go, they are quite interesting. So they have this peculiar nodding texture, and once they actually come into bloom, the heads, they straighten all the way up. So they will bloom perfectly straight above the plant. They will get a little bit floppy with too much moisture. This is a plant that actually grows with a pretty small amount of water required. So once it's established, you can pretty much plant it and just let it be. Deer and rabbits won't bug it, pollinators will love it, and you're not gonna have to look at it much more than to cut it down every fall or spring when you do your garden cleanup. So that is Allium bubble bath. And again, thanks for watching and making it to the end of the video. If you like these videos, follow us or check us out on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook for what else we have going on.